It has been in my rack for some time now. It's time for a full review of the Drummer 1973 three band FET stereo multiband compressor. Let's get to it. Hello everyone and welcome back to MixBuzz TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. After seeing this unit in other MixBuzz TV videos performing as a great two-bus compressor, here we are with a full review of one of my new compressors, the Drummer 1973, multiband, three-band FET stereo analog compressor. When prepping for this video review, I was a bit concerned because I knew it would have been difficult for me not to sound like Steven Slay, uh, a used car salesman when talking about this unit. Reason being, I love this compressor so very much. But jokes aside, I don't really give a damn because those of you who follow me know I'm a no BS guy. And if I review something and I say I like it, it's because I generally like it and use it on a daily basis for my mixes and mastering jobs. I got this unit a few weeks ago, Drummer shipped it to me with their new 1978 tone shaping a fat compressor that I was purchasing, so I had no plans to buy another compressor. But when I plugged this on on day one and started playing with it, I was immediately very impressed with the sound, how easy it was to use it, and what this compressor was capable of doing. So impressed that I left it on the two bus on day one on the mix that I was doing, a mix that it came out great. By the way, you can listen to it here and I'll link it in the info box down below. The front panel is pretty straightforward. What you see is what you get. Three sets of control, one for each band, low, mid and high bands. Each band has a threshold, attack, release and gain knobs, all independent from each other. Threshold and gain are fully variable, attack and release are stepped for easy and foolproof recalls. Attack has six position. 0, 2, 2, 5, 10, 20, and 50 milliseconds. Six position for the release two, but while the first three release positions are fixed at 80 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, and one second, four, five, and six are program dependent from fast to slow. And let me tell you this, this is the very first thing that I loved about this compressor. The program depending release works so smoothly and so well on a lot of material. They really nailed this. And I can say, I really think this is one of the reasons why this compressor is so easy to set up and make it sound great. Each band has a status switch. You can mute each band individually, solo it by muting the other two, and of course, leave it active. Great feature that allows you to monitor exactly what each band is doing compression wise and also helps you setting the crossover frequency, which is extremely important when you use a multiband compressor. You have two crossover frequency selection knobs here and here. The low crossover goes from 50 Hertz up to 1.3K. The high crossover goes from 1K to 14K, both fully variable, allowing you to easily set this thing to pretty much do anything you can possibly ask a compressor to do. From low end control to two bus duties to just DSing, High band and low band also have one exclusive feature each. The low band has the big button, an on-off switch taken from the 1978. It's a high-pass filter that removes the very low end, the sub-frequencies, out from the detector, much like many other compressors. But if you think that this is a multiband, you realize quickly how this feature gives you a whole new level of control over the low end. I feel confident saying this is an area where this unit really shines. Big and tight low end comes together much easier with this unit, at least for me. Great for down-tuned modern rock, hip-hop, EDM, and any genre that requires a lot of power and a big but still solid low end. The high band has the air switch. Technically, it reintroduces high frequencies while enhancing them. It's meant to compensate for heavy compression that sometimes can cause the material to sound a bit dull or simply can work as an enhancer. It works really well to give you that very open modern sound in your mixes without being harsh and yet it's not for every mix you'll need to get familiar with how it sounds don't just slap it on everything because it can sound too bright obviously but it's a nice feature to have because the fat circuit itself is warm is very rich and this is just an option on top of that that like i said it can help you get a more modern sounding mix a more uh, detailed sounding mix especially in the high end 
The two big VU meters have two switches to control whether you want the normal output level or the plus 10 dB, in which case when the VU meters read the zero is actually plus 10 dB. Reason for that is, remember when I mentioned in other video, this unit sounds absolutely great when pushed hard, especially the output. So because of that, the meters can be adjusted to show you how much you're pushing the unit which is a visual reference that is always good to have. Meters can also be set to show you VU or pick VU, very useful. Last module is the output section where we have the mix knob for parallel compression without having to do any routing in or out of the box and the output gain knob that goes from minus to plus 12 dB. Then we have the bypass and power switch so you can not only bypass each individual band, but you can also bypass the whole unit completely. Overall knobs feel great. The switches have a really nice clang to them. Uh, they are really solid. And overall, the unit is built like a tank. So this was a quick overview of the controls of the 1973. In this video, I ran full mix, vocals, bass, drums, and other loops into it. So to give you an idea of what this thing can do. But without further ado, let's have a listen to the examples and I'll see you at the end of the video for a few final comments. Just for one. Birds fly high in the summer sky and rest on the breeze. The same wind will take care of you and I will build a house in the trees. Your heart is on my sleeve. Did you put it there with a magic marker? For years I would believe that the word couldn't wash it away we can't fall any further if we can't feel ordinary love and we cannot reach any higher if we can't deal with ordinary love we can't fall any further if we can't feel ordinary love and we cannot reach any higher if we can't deal with with ordinary love we can fall any further if we can feel ordinary love and we can reach any higher if we can deal with ordinary love we can fall any further if we can feel ordinary love and we can reach any higher if we can deal with ordinary love we can fall any further if we can feel ordinary love and we can reach any higher if we can deal with ordinary love.
So this was the Drummer 1973 fat multiband stereo compressor on a bunch of different sources. I hope you enjoyed it. Few final words on it. I rarely click with a new unit as fast as I did with this one. But I found myself being very comfortable with this unit right off the bat. The way you can shape the low end with this thing is incredible. You know, I'm not one of those guys that preach, oh, you need such and such unit or such and such plugin, or you'll never get this sound. And this is the case here as well. The unit will not do the job for you. You need to know how to use this compressor and it may or may not go well with your style of mixing but while it'll not turn a demo sounding mix into a professional sounding one just running audio through it my experience with it is it has been really really easy to shape a big and tight low end with this compressor i find it great on program material not only because it gives you such a great degree of control but also because depending on how you land at the end of the mix you can really adjust it easily with this, EQ-wise. Even just using it at a broad stroke EQ, using the makeup gain of each band. I mostly used it on the two bus, but this thing is great on vocals. I love multiband compression on vocals. And on complex groups, like if you bus all your synths and you have a really diverse sounds on that group, that's really a lot you can do with this one. Overall, a very impressive unit and I still can't believe the price tag. So check out the 1973, and this is it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please click the like button. If you have any question about this compressor or anything else, let me know in the comments down below. If you don't have questions, just stop by and let me know what you think and say hi. Join us on Facebook and Twitter. Lots of cool things are going on in there. Support Mixbus TV by sharing the video on social media, forum, blogs, personal pages. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you next time.